kitchen. I'm um, just um, doing one of my own guitars. I meant to do this from the start. I mean, it, 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 these, it's one of those things that I never really think about, but I'm going to change the pickup rings. Um, they're not all exactly the same. This one's a bit thicker. But um, metal, better than plastic. Also, these pickups are a bit dirty. Uh, this guitar, um, I've been playing my PGM. Leave it in shot. Uh, yeah. Starting to do the fancy stuff, and see when you're trying to do the fancy stuff, it does actually sound better than um, uh, yeah some of the other guitars I've got. So I'm kind of looking at it and just sort of thinking, hmm. I moved on to the wee red, wee red, red star, and it didn't have the clarity between the notes for when you're doing fancy stuff. So just in case anyone didn't do this, I just one of my pals was that bit of a problem with the the pickup being very wobbly in one of those guitars. I was like, just take it off and. Swap these uh, springs round, or put more springs in, just get ones that a pen would do. I mean, it's not really doing anything, all it's doing is holding the pickup up. Um, so just in case you didn't know how to do that, it's a bit fidgety. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get this pickup out, actually, without um, it quite wedged in. Or it might not be, and it might be dead easy. Annoyingly, Seymour Duncan pickups um, come with, uh, quite often come with flathead screws, which are a little bit harder to use because the screwdriver sometimes jumps out. Um, this shouldn't take very long. I've polished the frets. Uh, this this guitar. I mean, when did I get this? Last last year at some point. Um, probably midsummer, which is when it got strings on it. So I got it. It was I couldn't find anything wrong with it. So basically, I've done nothing to this guitar apart from take it to bits. Um, I did rewire it a little bit because it was um, I wasn't happy the way it was wired, and um, that was really it. So I think what I'll do here is I'm going to just make sure these, I don't know if I want to put this, do I want to put this pickup back in again right now? Maybe, let's see what happens. You know, a bit of a clean anyway, and keep that separate. But it's the same thing with the, with the bad spring. Um, that Les Paul has it now. Let's put this for the leech it. There, so, um, that's if you, <laughs> you can see that. Yeah, so you want to put, put a better spring in that which I'll do next time I have it to bits or when it gets painted or whatever um, not, not a biggie just something you just need to do uh, it's, it's just not really often you get in to actually clean these things so if I give it a, a bit of a wipe just now I can get the bits that you can't really get at normally and this is a this is a pearly gates this particular Seymour Duncan um, and here's my New ring, so I'll put the big one on there and on there. I'm sure these are going to fit. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's not obvious, is it? I'm claiming that pickup rings make no difference to the sound at all, but I'm sure there's forums where they, where they go. <laughs> I like the the bright tone of the metal pickup ring and all that nonsense. Um, I've been having some fun on the, the Telecaster and the Stratocaster group. Basically, I went on them because uh, Jen got banned for paint posting a guitar that was painted so I posted one you know, I posted a picture of me playing one of the one of the guitars and it's just right you know, a lot of people you know, obviously you get nasty people but it's just I don't know I don't I don't understand the mentality of being of, of being into being into telecasters and stratocasters like that it's just everyone's just posted it's like you know it's almost like people are embarrassed and so oh, well, I've only got one here. It's only it's only a Japanese. One. Oh, I'm sorry. It's only it's only a Mexican one. I can't afford a real one. I'm sorry. Can I please still come in? I oh, know. I oh, know. I'll try harder. I'll work harder. And I'll spend more money so I can have a have a real Fender Strat. Just like, oh god. I don't. You know. So, oh, what's what's the the correct type of tuners? I don't like these ones. These ones don't look like the ones they had in 1962. But I don't want to drill holes in my guitar. Just like, oh my god. I don't know. I think maybe I'm just too much of a bollocks did you see that fire off that's that that's the thing about doing these spring things i don't know how i'm able to find that it's, it's gone into a big pile of shite damn it there it is found it already that was good that was lucky so watch out for the maybe i'm i, I wonder if i can go if i can be bothered i could go back and put that in slow motion yeah springs ping uh so just make sure you don't uh do that because that that Luckily that hit the wall. If that hadn't hit the wall, that could have gone for m miles. There we go. D 
da da point of danger past. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any problem with this fit. So uh, yeah, so super super interesting guitar tech stuff here. But these are things you have to do. You know, it's like. I was, I, I, I was always, some people don't do mods to their own guitars, this is the sort of thing I would have done in any one. I remember doing this to my Gibson SG, I remember putting um, a metal cover on the, the bridge pickup one time, just because I thought it looked cool, uh, it wasn't really worth it, I'm not sure, is this actually going to fit in here, this is, I see, sometimes you get, you, you better to look at these things, this might not actually fit, it looks a little bit, uh, it must be a little bit bigger than that one. It is. See, look. That's so there we go. So, ah, I wonder if there's enough play. This might just be this. This, this might be a total a, a total no go. I think it's a total no go. I, just, I can't remember. But I mean, obviously, I could file it down. But what I'm really doing here is just making because I thought it would look better with black pickups around. But um. So it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So there you go. That's how that's how you change the pickup sounds if you want to. But um, but to be fair, this is not a normal guitar. This has got three humbuckers in there, so you do have to move things about to put the third humbucker in anyway. But that was it. That was, so there you go. Um, sometimes that that's that, see that's one of the things about being, doing stuff for yourself when you're when you're getting doing someone else's guitar. They might really want them, and it's like if you're, someone's paying you to do it. It's like I've already taken all the strings off. Well, I snapped a string, and I have polished the frets while it was in there. So I mean, it's not a total waste of time. But um, yeah, so there you go. You can't really just put. You have to make sure they're not that there's. A, if if you're really really tight for space, which I mean to be honest, putting three bunker buckers in this gap is. I think they probably had to extend. This one's probably sitting a couple of millimeters back the way just to try and get it in. If you look at there's, there's, a, there's the one I took out. I'm just talking about it's that much bigger yeah and that's that's enough to make it not fit but the good thing about doing it this way is uh, I can actually clean this pickup ring properly because you can actually get round to the bit where the thing is so at least it's done something I can't bother taking the other pickups out to take to clean the pickup rings it's my guitar you know it's like, but, um, and I like this one I think slightly better than the PGM um, but I was playing that yesterday and it's an awful good guitar it really is um and i think the the evo pickups as well make perfect sense i don't know if they make that much difference if you're like you know playing a bit of sabbath or a bit acdc or something like that but when you're trying to go and then i really noticing that the the notes are much more distinct with the i mean these are dimarzio evos so that those are ones i remember i've watched an interview with Steve Vai talking about it, it took him you know, a whole year and about 20 different prototypes to get the ones that he wanted. Um, obviously if you're Steve Vai, things like clarity and being able to hear notes are very important. Um, it doesn't make the guitar easier to play though. So I mean it's like, oh I've got my first guitar, but I've got Hannah's money, I think I'll put Evo's pickups in it and it's like, well, I don't know, they don't really cover up very much, they don't cover up very many mistakes. Um, I thought we talking about the, like the opposite of the, the I always find that with the, the Falcon, the Washburn wings as well, they're quite um, intimidating to play because they play exactly what you put in, so if you, you, you don't get any leeway, all the, you know, if you, if you don't hit a note as hard as the other notes, it doesn't sound as loud on the Evo type pickups, whereas on like the one with the dirty fingers is in my flying V. It's like, yeah, it's cool. It's kind of almost got a built-in compressor. So it's like, oh, if you play it a wee bit quiet, it'll be cool. You know, it'll, it'll be all right. It'll kind of, it kind of hides mistakes. And it's much easier to batter out chords and play solos and sound decent. But if you're trying to do something fancy and intricate, it just doesn't have the same clarity and, and note definition and all that nonsense. Um, which is something that, to be honest, I'm not really that bothered about. But... I really notice it when you're trying to do something that's very, especially when you're trying to learn. I'm trying to learn how to do bloop, bloop, all that, and it kind of turns to mush with other guitars. But the the evil seemed to really cut it. To be to be honest, that was why one of the reasons. I mean, it's taken me a year to get into it. 
but uh, one of the reasons I bought the PGM was because I, I really wanted a you know a technical guitar. I quite fancied being a bit more you know a bit a bit more show offy on the guitar or have the ability to be show offy. Where did I put the screws that came out of that? That's not them. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're there. I can actually see them. Yeah, so there you go. That was a, that was a, a super interesting video. That, that. <laughs> I really thought they were going to be cool as well, the metal pickup rings. But I mean, by the time you put the three of them on, I see you now. Once you once you once I've put two on, I'm already I'm now a good couple of millimeters over what the the last one would be. Oh. It's it's close, but just nah, not worth it. It's not worth it for something that's purely cosmetics or something. Or there'll be a, there'll be a guitar. Or I'll build. I'll put the metal pickup rings on, and I'll do some cool. Maybe that, that custom one I'm getting. Um, some, something like that. Plastic pickup rigs it is. It is quite annoying that they're not flat either, but hey, don't really care. This is a, this is a, pl a player's guitar. At least I'm calling it a player's guitar because I'm a player. A guitar player, not a Good for good for cleaning your teeth. So you would think that teeth pickups, same sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so I mean. It, I really do have the smorgasbord of Seymour Duncan pickups. See that one in the middle's got um, like hex poles on it there. That's a screaming demon bridge pickup, uh, and that's a obviously you know, it's an invader because um, invaders look like this. Maybe I think it's quite an old invader as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I really, can I really be bothered showing you how to string it back up again. Not really. But there you go. That so that if you ever wanted to change the pickup rings, that would be how to do it. But what you would do is you would make sure that the pickup rings fitted before you took the whole guitar to bits. So that was why. But the reason you know, it's like, oh, why don't take all the pickups out and put them in? It's like, no, I did that because just to make sure, so I didn't have to take them all to bits. I'm really at that. I think that's maybe, I don't think that's ever going to be any cleaner than that. Um, not really much I can do about it. But yeah, so I rewired this one, so it's, um, it was just the way I got it, the same as a strap, neck pickup, those two, that one, those two, that one, but now I've got it so that. Bitch humbucker, split that one and split that one so you get your know, two two single coils together in the middle. A humbucker in that position, that one split in half and that one split in half. So it's kind of it's got an extra sound, like compared to you know the PGM. To basically it, it splits in positions two and four and uses the middle pickup. But in the middle position, you just get a single coil. Whereas in this one, middle position is a humbucker. Um, which is, to be honest, probably not worth having this amount of Seymour Duncanage in it. But uh, it was already in the guitar. I don't. I don't think I would have necessarily changed what would have been in it. You know, is it the Ibanez V7 and V8, which is probably what this guitar would have come with. Um, there's really much point in trying to clean the bridge very much either. This is a. Is it a Takeuchi one? And you got Takeuchi. So this is the. Um, the low. TRS trim, whereas that one there is a low TRS2 trim. It's a low TRS trim 2. You can see it there. Um, the difference being this one has that sort of thing where you screw in the 
just a bolt, whereas this has got the collar thing. You know, where you, where you attach the the arm. Um, which uh, I don't know if it really makes any difference. Oh, this is, oh, this is a push-in one. That's right. This is a push-in one. So these these wee plastic bits wear out. These are those wee plastic um rings. You can buy new ones. One of them I put a PTFE tape in. I think it might have been this one because I didn't want to buy the wee. It's just like a fiver for the wee plastic bits because they do wear out. I, 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 yeah. I, might have been, I might have to put another bit of P P T F E tape in there, but I don't need, don't need to have the guitar to bits to do that. Yep, so I suppose the time to restring is here, and uh, do I do a how to string a Floyd Rose thing? It's a, it's a nightmare, and a lot of people just don't, they don't, um, if you're not, <laughs> that way inclined, technically inclined to doing these things. Uh, it's a bit annoying. You know, it's, 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 I remember it's so much easier to tune like a, to restring like a tunematic or a rap over or basically anything other than a Floyd or even a Bixby. I, I, I would, you, know, you always hear about people having a terrible time with um, oh, stringing a Bixby's a nightmare. So when I last time I strung a Bixby, I was like pure prepared for it to be total hell and it was fine. Um, So just when when you get the opportunity to do this every time we've got strings off, just try and keep it as nice as you can. Um should probably put the oil out on this, but I can't be bothered. It's a, it's a, it's a player's guitar. I can make it so it's not actually sticky when you touch it. There's always a better idea with my big it's gonna do something good in it. I mean, it does look like it could get more, it, it could do with a wee bit, a, a wee tiny bit of oil on it, should I just do it anyway? Can I be bothered? 15 minutes to not actually manage to do anything? No, so I've only waited, no, I, I did polish the frets, so, and I had to change the strings anyway. Ideally, if you're if you're doing a Floyd Rose, there's a, there's, a, there's a wee bit of fretwear on it, but not very much. Um, and because it's an Ibanez fretwear, it's not under the cowboy cords up at the, up here. You're under the G and the D because if you buy an Ibanez, you're going. Brrr! That's the whole point. Isn't it? That's why I bought one. I don't. I'm not. I mean, obviously these things do. I mean, the guy in Pete and Diesel does play. You know, one of these, but uh, I mean, he's basically just playing open chords most of the time. So I mean, they're, they're totally fine for it. Totally fine, but. Uh, so I'm doing this the the funky way. So I'm going to string this in, in essentially backwards. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the string. I'm going to stick it through the tuner first. And sometimes it's, much, it's actually probably much easier to take off that. In fact, I'm just going to take that off. Um, it's only two screws. See this? This string retainer bar. I'll put that back on again once I put the strings on because it's easier just to take it off and then put it on again and try and poke it. The other reason I'm doing this is so I can actually just clean that wee bit of dusty bit that's in behind it because that's cool. So if I just ignore that, put it back on at the end. I'm not, I'm not sure really why, it, why a guitar like this needs that because it's clamped. But This actually has a better Ibanez logo on it than the PGM. The PGM one's all scratched off. And I keep seeing them, they're scratched off. I don't know if they just maybe they just didn't print it on as well for some reason. No, no, there's something there's some reason. <laughs> um whatever that may be. I think I've sorted that bridge as well. I think I have. Alright. So E. So I'm putting this through the tuner. I don't need to slide it in below that bar now, I can put it on later and then I'm going to bring it back up to the bridge. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the springs on the back of the bridge. 
to hold it in uh, and then I'll probably jack it up to hold it because it's quite Floyd roses are a bit, a bit fidgety now, I, was it, which one was it I put the uh, I'm wondering whether it's worthwhile putting the you know, if you try to silence the springs I did notice this guitar kind of went brrr a little bit I'll do that anyway I'll silence the springs right I'll show you how to do that um, what you need is heat shrink tubing which I do have some sitting on the floor over here somewhere if I can find it I've actually got a bag of heat shrink tubing so I'll just open, open my new bag because these are the bits of bits I never really use anyway you get ones that take the, the springs and that this stops them going boing when they're pinged so I think that's probably the right one that one this will have yellow springs in it so if I make that about that long um, Eric Clapton likes the noise of the springs he doesn't actually use the trems but I mean I'm, I'm quite happy not having the likes the springs yeah, but it looks like I've made it much smaller, but you know, it'll make sense. No, I've actually cut a wee bit more. Just so I can get it through. Right. And then I'll do that with all of them. Make them all yellow. Why not? Doesn't do any harm. I think it's more for recording and feedback and stuff like that. I don't think it makes any difference to the tone, whether you've got bits of rubber on the springs or not. And I will be um, heating them up with a lighter once they're on. I just, I mean, you, I can, you can hear it. I did notice on this guitar more than any other one when you certain ways you can hit a chord it kind of goes brrr just when you know not and it's like and I'd rather not have that make it feel less like a make it feel more, more like a hardtail. Takeuchi. I think these bridges are actually really expensive. I remember my um I bought my Ibanez Destroyer. And it came with this bridge, but it never originally had this bridge. I had one of those power rocker ones, and someone had um, oh, what was it? See, this, this is, is a, bit, a bit of a hindrance because you have to hold this on to the posts while you put this spring on. So, three arms handy just now, and obviously, much easier to do when you're not trying to do a YouTube video at the same time. And I think you need to use like a, a heat gun or something to melt these, but I just use a lighter. The other one, the third one, it should be held on itself if I should lose it. Let's I'm going to raise this up and I'm going to wedge it with something, probably this. Just to, just to put the strings on before we get at it. This one has been set up though, and I'm putting the, stra the same strings back on it again. So the theory is that once I put the same strings back on it again, it should be exactly the same. It should, I shouldn't need to adjust anything. But that doesn't always work, and uh, I would. Normally, I'm going to try. This is this is the this is the dangerous bit because I'm sitting there looking at that. It's got to go into that wee hole there. So I'm going to cut it in line with the back of the block. I've committed. I've committed to. It. I could probably I probably didn't need to leave quite as much as that, but that's fine. And then take that up. Basically, the reason I've got it uh, wedged up is so that this uh, this this, uh, ang this um, Allen key's got an easier angle to get at. Pretty strong. Yeah, if I just tighten up here. Good enough, right? And then. Continue on. Now these are uh, roto sound strings, so they've got like different coloured ends on them. And when you 
they are linked together, so this is the now the EADG string that I'm doing. Boom. Well, fit to the tuner, fit to the tuner. You bastard. I've had it not fit to the tuner before, and it's actually not fit to the tuner now. It's just a wee bit bent at the, the end of the wrap, so I need to try and squish that with those pliers so it actually fits through the hole in the tuner. Still fit. Like that, there we go. And then again, I'm gonna to go to the, I'm going to, I'd, I'd rather have a wee bit, I'd rather have an extra turn on the tuner at the top and not need it. So I'm just cutting it, I'm just basically cutting it in line with the back of the block. There, put this on. This is a bit of a more, more dangerous way of doing it than doing it the other way, but. And the Allen key is. I was, I was really demonstrating how high, I wondered how high you could bend the string up the other day on this when it snapped and it was like, basically if when you're bending up it's more likely to go, ah, don't go, ha ha, which is what I did, like I think I even, might have even made that noise, like just trying to make it as high as I can, as you can see like up here, this makes it kind of act like a locking tuner, the idea with a locking tuner is there's no winds around the post so they can't expand, so in this one for example there you go you've got like half a wind on it. A wee bit rangers eh for the red, white and blue, but hey. I bet you there's a, a bet, I bet you there are people in Glasgow who refuse to buy roto sound strings because of the red, white and blue, which are rangers colours, uh, on their guitar. No, 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 no putting rangers colours on my guitar. I was going to be a bit complaining about the corker because the corker, the bridge on it, uh, you can actually see the ball ends, and it kind of the the the, the, the bright colours kind of they kind of show up in the guitar. You go oh, red, white, and blue, right? But it's colours the rest of the guitar. Everything else is brown, so it's like really we'd rather have just probably just plain ball ends. So I'm going to buy different strings for the corker. In fact, I've got a set of nine and a half sitting there, which I bought for a, to try them out. Never bought the Daniels. So maybe try them, just out of interest, see what nine and a halfs are like. There is something to be said for tens. I've been on nines for the last couple of years, but um, there is something, oh, um, there is something to be said for tens. I think it's actually easier for beginners maybe having tens because, uh, you know, when you're holding down your bar chords and stuff like that, you tend to hold them down too much and then, um, bend the strings out of tune when you're holding a chord, but you don't, you know, it's, it's less likely to happen with tens, you know, you get a bit more fight in, it, in them. On the other side, it's not as easy to bend notes as much. Not that I do that much bending, or certainly not, you know, what's that, that Dave Gilmore bend where you bend it up four notes or something like that, I just don't do that. Um, maybe, I'll maybe get to it. Actually, I noticed I was doing it in the Black Sabbath band the other night, we were playing in, I can't remember which song it was. One of the ones off the first album is a bit where it's like the note is like a geezer bends it up like a full step. Okay, we'll do that then. It's quite a bend on a bass. Get a full step on a bass. But like all all of these things, uh, it just becomes very routiney. Doing it, you know, it's like if you, the, the way to if you're not if you. No matter who you are, the first time you, you, you string guitars, or even even a standard guitar, like one that doesn't have a Floyd Rose on it, it's good. You're not going to be able to do it as fast as I'm doing it here. I'm just done a certain amount of automatic pilot mode. Not that I changed Floyd Roses that often, but it's just like, you know, you just run it into a sequence of events. It's just a case of first to do that bit, and then it's like, so this is the boring bit when I'm actually doing the thing. I'm not actually thinking at all just now. It's just like, okay, that goes through there, that goes through there, that goes on there. That goes down there, that goes to there, I'm going to cut it right there. I'm going 
that are put in this hole. I love these, uh, one of the, the uh, an advancement made with Floyd Roses, or maybe it's just slightly more expensive ones, these Takeuchi ones. See these wee blocks that are, you're, I'm screwing in here, they don't fall out on this guitar. I think I Ibanez worked out that if you made them sort of T-shaped, they don't fall out. You want that to be real careful in the middle. You think you want to be careful in the middle. Okay. I never liked this. I never liked this system of having to cut the ends of the strings off. It's just, it just seems to be an awful lot of hassle for what it's worth. But these guitars do stay in tune like nothing else. Um, you know, you pick up the guitar, you've not played it for a couple of weeks, and just assume it's going to be in tune, and it pretty much is. You have to, unless it's been a temperature change, that's the only time they've got to tune. It doesn't go to tune on its own. And because I've had the bridge off, I've probably, I bet you these posts have moved as well. It's probably going to be sitting too. Doesn't look too bad. Mm. There is actually a slight issue with the, the bridge pins on this one. That's exactly the same as on the PGM. Where it's like the, these posts don't stick in particularly well. I don't think it makes any difference, but it's annoying. Kind of. Maybe there's a downside to basswood. But now, now it's under pressure. It's like kind of, I don't know if you can actually see that. Like this is no, no longer sitting. This post is just slightly, and we're talking about less than half a millimetre. It's moved, but I went down to do that to Steve Bai's guitar. Mind you, it's 20 years old, and who knows who else has been using, you know, you, you know. I suppose the thing about a guitar like this as well is it's unlikely you're going to have some idiot who doesn't know what he's doing trying to adjust it, which, which you're more likely to get on a cheaper guitar, because I mean, these things weren't cheap. You know, if you're looking at a Japanese RG, maybe if you're looking at one, you know, the cheap one, the Korean one, it's like you, you, you might have had some, someone who didn't, you know, only paid 150 quid for the guitar, so I'm not take, spending 150 quid getting the guy in the shop to tune, to set it up for me, I'm going to try and adjust it myself, and then it's like, you know, adjusting all the things when it's up in tension and stuff, and it's like, not, not, a, good, not a good idea. But there we are, we are, the strings are back on, and I think that needs to come up a little bit. I get a feeling that that's in, that's not the same one, is it? No, it is not. So this is for the, the just, just looking at it by eye, eye line to see where it was meant to be. A wee bit higher. Hold it there. But these are things that I don't know. You can you can look up charts to see where it's meant to go and all that. But um, ultimately, the just just having experience in it is normally the best way. It's the best way to go. So if if you can just bodge yourself together, twenty years of experience tuning guitars, that's the way to do it. The only way to get twenty years of experience tuning guitars is to tune them. I can see how it happens when you get. I think there's a lot of people that you know, played the guitar for twenty years, have the guitar, and basically every six months they just take it to the shop, say here, you tune this, you know. Not that far away. Eh? Eh? I've actually over tuned some of these, over tightened some of these because it was not bad. Just uh, we're, we're at a stage of it just being low action is good, but too low action is just silly. I mean, 
can try to adjust that trim a little bit as well it's not bad but I think it just needs to come up a little bit that just seems to be crazy action where's my wee I can't find my wee measuring thing what is it it's normally below here I wonder if I've poked it under with something like something I can poke it out with or have I already taken it out and had a look at it <laughs> well, I need my wee block thing that tells me how high the action is no fun when, no fun not having that where's my phones and use it as a torch Technical, keep it wedged in below. There it is there, there's my steel rule as well. So if I, poke, if I can poke out the steel rule, like so, I can use the steel rule to poke out the... Probably the best place to keep these things isn't, in, isn't wedged in below your stereo. There you go, I think this is the action, this is just ridiculous right now it's going to be like ha under a millimeter i think looking at it jesus jesus yeah it's, it's 0.25 of a mil and 0.5 of a mil so i think i can probably raise that up a little bit and um, that does seem a little bit excessive bring it up to Put out half a mil. Okay, yep, yep. One mil. Really good for 1.25 because I still want to be able to play chords on it. <laughs> Maybe I need meant to loosen off those springs a little bit. I mean, it is an RG, so you think, oh, super low action is the way to go, but one mil is just, it's not enough. It's not enough, I tell you. Still stupidly low. The temptation is though because it's an Ibanez to try and make it as stupidly low as I can. This is going to take the bridge off. I shouldn't have taken the bridge off. I should just have left it. I ain't broke, go fix it. I now it's start, now it's starting to come back up. I the action. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still, it's still tuning up. The only way really to do a Floyd Rose is to do one, one string at a time, unless you're about the. It doesn't really work when you oh, well, what do you have the pretz of polish and stuff? You, you have to take it off. I see now it is sitting back to. You just have to do this. This is the part of the tune setting any floating trim. It's just. I'm tuning it up so the E is now level, right? But because the E is now in tune, it's pulled the bridge up a little bit so the A will now be flat. So I need to bring the A up a wee bit, I need to bring the D up a wee bit. And every time you do it, it just gets closer till eventually, when I've done the E, I'll go back to the original E and it'll be in tune. It's not quite there yet. So we've now got an E. The A's staying, D's staying, G's fine, B, E.
Yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on here. Just need to maybe um, stretch it in a little bit. I'm not going to bother doing any more of this video. I've been doing it for fucking ages. 40 minutes of just sitting talking pish. But there you go. Um, oh, jeez, that's way, that's way too high. What's going on here? What's going on here? Got to go down. Got to go back down. That the whole thing when I was sitting there going, oh, I just got to go down. That's that's um, ridiculous. What's what's my actually sitting at now? It doesn't. It doesn't seem that low. It's only one point five. How come the bridge is sitting so so high off the body? It seems it seems insane. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so there's the even someone who knows how to do toy toys and done their own thing. It is a bit of a fidgety bastard. Um, Basically, set yourself an afternoon aside to do it. Fuck on!